In this video, we're going to show you how to create a Blaine IMS user account and then also provide you with some tips and tricks and how to navigate the system successfully. The first thing that you're going to want to do is because this is an online platform, you're going to open your internet browser. Whichever browser you use is fine. We prefer or the preferred um, browser is going to be Chrome or Microsoft Edge. So open your browser and in the address bar, please type in Blaine mn.gov forward slash IMS. This is a short link that will redirect you to the Blaine IMS system. Here you can either select register as a new user in the lower left or up here in the upper right hand corner select the register button. Then on the register for access screen you're going to enter your full name, email, and then you're going to create a password. Password needs to be at least six characters, one special character, one number, one uppercase, and one lowercase. The special character is either like something like an exclamation mark, an at symbol, or a pound sign. If this is a personal computer and you choose to do this, you can go ahead and select save a password or you can just close the box so it doesn't come up. I prefer to do it, so we're going to save the password. Then after you get the emails sent to you, you're going to open up a new browser or if you have your email on your phone, you're going to go to your email on your phone and you're going to find the email. If you open your email, off to the right you're going to see something that says confirm account. This is a hyperlink. Please select confirm account and that will open up a new tab that says your, your account has been confirmed. From this point you're going to select please click here to log in and then log in with the email address and the password that you just created. And then we're going to add some of your contact information. This spot here for the mobile number is for you to be able to enter your multiple number and maybe in the future receive text messages. At this time, Blaine does not utilize this function of IMS, so you will not be receiving text messages. If it is something you do not want to do, you can skip that. Then you're going to enter your address and your contact information. and then select save. Now that you've created your user account, if you're a homeowner or an architect, you are done and you're ready to start using the system. If you're a contractor, you will also need to add your contractor license or registration to the system. To view this, please see the video on how to become a pro in the IMS system. Moving forward with the tips and tricks of the system, one of the things that's really nice is that there are navigation icons that you can use to navigate through the system. So here on the top blue banner, you're going to notice that the circle on the left, which is the City of Blaine logo, is the home button. So anytime that you're in the system, you're going to navigate through. You can always see this top blue banner and use the icons up here. One of the other items that you have is your access to your account or your profile information is here in the upper right hand corner. When you select it, you'll see a drop down menu where you can access your My Profile, your dashboard, and then you can also log out. The My Profile is where you would go if you need to add a mobile number in the future or modify any of your contact information. And then one of the nice things um, about this is because it is an online system, you can access it from any device that you can access the internet, whether that is a computer, laptop, tablet, or smartphone, and the system will act the same. One of the um, easiest ways to get back to the system is if you bookmark it. So every browser is going to be different, and if you don't know how to bookmark the, um, the website, you can look it up online. Here for Edge, it's up here in the upper right hand corner. You can just click the little star button and either add it to your favorites automatically, and it'll add it to your favorites bar so that you can access it again easily in the future. 
one of the things that might give you problems is ad entering addresses. So we'd like to give you some tips on how to do that. So if you're going to apply for the permit, all applications that come in do have to be associated with an address. So for example, we're going to go to a permit and we're just going to apply for a basement finish permit. So you'd go through the steps selecting the different types until you get to the basement finish permit. And this is the address um, screen where you might run into some problems. And so do you notice how when this comes up, I have an autofill turned on with my browser. So it automatically, the browser itself tries to enter an address that it thinks that I'm going to want to enter. Usually this is going to be your home address. Because of the search features, that might give you issues. So if we're going to type in 10801 to enter it, do you notice how there's another menu that shows up underneath it? And then we can't actually see the address that we want. If it's for your own autofill, your list might be longer and it might cover up this. So we're going to try to avoid that by taking off the very first digit of the address and just entering the 0801 and then the street number and you notice how the chrome or the autofill is turned off and then you select the address you'll notice it's selected by putting it in he it's here and then you can go ahead and hit next if that doesn't work for you there are some other options that you can do um, you can enter it um, by searching the PIN or the PID for your address. If you don't know what that is, you can find that by going back to the home up here in the upper left hand corner. And then you can go to search locations under property address. And then here you would just type in your address. And the least amount of information you can put in usually is the best because if you spell out street, when we have it as just ST in our system, you won't get any results. And then here under the location search results, you'll find the record number, which is the PID. So you can click on this link and then you can copy or highlight and copy that. Or if you want to write it down, then you can do that as, as well. Another um, tip or how to navigate the system is the dashboard icon. This is a very important one that you're going to want to get used to using because it gets you to your permits, inspections, and everything that is related to your individual account. And so if you click on the dashboard icon, right now we don't have very many tiles because I don't have any active permits or active inspections in here. but once that happens, that'll fill up. Let's go back to this pending record. So every time that you're in the system and you hit the next button, the system will automatically save everything that you've entered when you use that next button. So if we go here to our pending records to see what we've already started, it'll take us back to that basement room finish that we had started previously. It takes you right back to the last page. So if you read through this and then click I accept, and then you would go through the application process. One of the things we'd like to show you is how to enter the contact information because um, sometimes that can be a little bit difficult for homeowners. Um, so anytime that you're hiring a contractor to do work that's covered under this permit, they do have to be listed in the system as a contractor. And I can show you how to do that one second. So here on the contacts page, you're going to want to use the search box because they have to be properly licensed or registered in our system. It's not something that you can just autofill. You do have to search for them. So you'd want to enter here in this search box, you enter their name. Um, it is a, a searches by just if the name is including. So if I just type in heating, all of our registered and active accounts are listed in here. 
So you would go ahead and find the one that you're just, just choosing to hire and you click on their name and you'll notice how it enters their information here. The applicant information auto populates because you're the one applying for it and the owner information is actually something that you cannot change as that is provided from Anoka County. If you notice that is different than what it should be, feel free to contact our offices and we can help you with that. We'd also like to show you how to upload files to your permit. The process when you get to it is when you're applying for a permit, there is going to be an upload screen that's going to ask you for specific things. The title of what you're asking for is up here. To choose a file, you would either click here, choose a file, and then you would look where it is located on your system. Or another way of doing it is if you wanted to minimize your screen, you can always drag and drop. So if you click on the button to make your window smaller, and let's say you have it here on your desktop, you can always click and drag right over, release, and it'll put it in there. And then you can hit next. And then the file is uploaded. This happens the same way whether it's during your application process or after your application is submitted and you're requested to send new documents in, you would go to the files tile of your permit and follow that same process. For questions, please call 763 785 6177 or email building at blainmn.gov.